What's up guys? I'm uh, super excited about today's video. Um, also a little sketched out because anytime I get the camera out around my house, my wife turns into like, rah, um, starts coming at me like JJ Watt. So if you see her, give me a heads up. All right guys, so like I said, this is a uh, super fun day. Uh, earlier in the year when I was in Louisiana chasing redfish and black drum. Uh, the audio is kind of sketched because it was filmed with my old GoPro. Uh, but the video and the day was just too fantastic not to share. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'm gonna make sure I talk about uh, the flies I used that day and my leader setup and my, you know, just basically the uh, the setup I used to chase redfish in Louisiana. It's October. The season is just beginning down there for me, so I will be making more trips down there soon. I basically get up every day, check the weather, and if I get three days of, you know, lots of sun and no wind, um, and the tides are moving in the right direction, I throw the kayak in the truck and I head out.
Thank <laughs> you.
All right, guys, super fun day in the marsh, and I told you I would wrap up this video by just kind of like talking about my how I rig it and set up for uh, for right uh, for red fishing, right? So first thing we'll start off with is I like a nine foot A weight. Uh, this is an Orbis H3D. I've used a Recon. I've used a, an Allen. Um, I really just like a just a fast action rod. Uh, you're gonna be casting weighted flies and uh, working with big fish that are gonna have a lot of power. So anyway. Mirage reel, something with a large arbor and a good drag system, uh, you're going to be using it. They uh, fish, they like to pull. Uh, I don't get super specific on fly lines because I'm, I'm fishing bass and carp and I live in on the border between Louisiana and Arkansas. So I just need something that's going to cover all my needs and I don't want to have to change out fly lines for like specific to redfish or, or bonefish or whatever it is. So this is just a uh, Orvis Salt General All-Arounder and it covers my needs uh, in, you know, for most warm water situations, whether it's smallmouth or carp or uh pike or whatever it's a it's a good line um does what i want it to do so i'll set that there and we'll talk about leader uh i build my own leaders i use a six foot system uh i go with you know just mono at the beginning and then i use fluorocarbon at the end um so what i start off with is about two and a half to three feet a 50 pound big game um I use a blood knot to attach, you know, one and a half to two foot, uh, 40 pound big game mono. Again, super cheap at Walmart. It's like three bucks for 300 yards. So you're going to have it forever. Uh, and then I like abrasion resistance, uh, fluorocarbon. So I use another, say a foot to 15 inches um, as my tippet. Uh, attach my flies to the end of that. And the reason I do that is because redfish are tough. The marsh is tough. Uh, you're usually fishing around oyster and, uh, you know, anything that's going to have like a little bit of a, Gonna put a little nicks and ticks and just basically just destroy your leader if you're using anything that doesn't have an abrasion resistance. So I like fluorocarbon for that, but it's super expensive, so I don't want to build an entire six foot leader out of fluorocarbon. So just a slight little taper. Um, obviously, you're casting weighted flies, so you're not really getting worried about turnover as much as just being able to lay a fly down in front of a fish. You need to be accurate in the marsh. Um, redfish, especially in Louisiana, or uh, they're they're just they want to eat. I mean, they're hungry, they're aggressive. So if you can just get a fly in front of them. Um, you're gonna be good. So you don't really have to lay out long cast at, you know, 60 feet and wait for, you know, fish to swim by. Basically, you just, you see one and you just try to throw the fly in its mouth. What am I talking about? Talking about my rod, talking about my reel, talking about my line. I guess probably wanna talk about fly. So here's my, my fly system. Um, super organized is my, definitely the way I go. So anyway, let's see if I can find the fly from that day. This is a good one. I like a lot of brown and gold shrimp patterns. Black and blue. Uh, gurglers, topwater patterns. Obviously, those are just great anywhere. But the one I'm looking for from that day, this has been a really great pattern for a long time. Um, okay, so I like a lot of brown and gold shrimp patterns. This is the one from that day. It's just a number two saltwater hook with medium dumbbell eyes. I've uh, been putting a lot of weed guards on mine lately, and I use the 40-pound mono because you'll be working around uh, oyster and, uh, you know, the, the canes and stuff off the in the marsh are, are pretty uh, they're pretty tough, man. So you can cast this into into the, the grass or the vegetation. You can pull it out, and you can – a lot of times I'll do that. I'll throw it right in and just pull right along the redfish is cruising the bank, uh, and weed guards help, especially the big, the big ones. Um, but anyway, like I said, size 2, just a brown shrimp. Lots of gold. Another pattern's been really good. Same thing. Lots of gold. Uh, Craffer, faux marabou, um, anything like that for your for your tails. Uh, this is my faux reel shrimp. I have a tying video on my page for that. Uh, it's like same thing. Number two, medium dumbbell eyes. They like that a lot. Uh, let's see what else I got in here. Um, Quans are great. I use a lot of these. Uh, the black drums seem to favor more of the crustacean looking patterns with a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a body. Seems like the, uh, I catch more redfish on more of the shrimp patterns because you're, you're swimming them rather than crawling them. The, uh, the black drum, like they like to bury their head down and, and dig. So I keep a crab pattern on when I see black drum. And that's pretty much it, man. I'm not super, uh, not super complicated when it comes to to patterns for redfish in, in the marsh. Um, this is the actual quan, or not quan, this is the actual crimp that the black drum ain't. So I put eyes on just for fun, just just because uh, you don't really need them in Louisiana. They don't care if your fish have eyes or your, your patterns have eyes. It's just fun to add them every now and then. Um, 
we'll talk about a lot of times in the winter, uh, you're going to get some super low tides and uh, redfish will still be up. They'll be crawling. I like to go to BBIs at that point in time, BB chain, size two, same thing, saltwater hook, and just get really slim in your profile. And you can land this kind of close to them without making a huge disturbance in the water that a lot of your medium and your small dumbbell out patterns are going to do, especially something like something that's going to hold a lot of water like that. Is gonna just it's gonna throw a lot of water when you're casting it which is gonna spook fish and then when it lands it's just gonna be like thump and you red fish are gonna go see ya but that's pretty much everything i, I know um let me talk about my net because that's important like a big net um this is a lunker uh, net from rising extra large bag you're gonna be catching fish somewhere between 20 and 45 inches most of the time somewhere between you know 15 20 pounds um that's gonna help and I'm going to close on the one thing that I think is probably important that most people don't do uh, is that is pinch your barbs. If you're working with fish, you're in a kayak, they're really close. It sucks to get one of these in your head or one through your hand um, or in your ear or whatever. And having a barb on it makes it even worse. But uh, these fish, they usually start to mess with them. I've been hitting my head with my neck they start slapping around and they start kicking things up. And uh, the last thing you want to do is have a barb on this. Redfish don't jump. They just take off running. So these will... Uh, Pinch the barbs, makes it getting the, uh, the hook out of your face and their face a lot easier. And that's pretty much all I got, man. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure I drop descriptions uh, in the description, the, the links to setting my kayak up for sight fishing or rigging out for uh, any type of, uh, you know, making yourself stealthy in the marsh in my kayak and uh, how to build blood knots with a carabiner because that's the, that's the way I do it when I'm building my saltwater, my saltwater leaders. And that's pretty much all I got. Done.